Forestieri, which in Italian means uh, mechanically bespoke. On this episode of Grassroots Garage, we sit down with the designer, creator, and the man behind the watch brand Forestieri. If you want one of these watches, we'll link the website in the description. But get in quick because these are limited edition. We're in a grassroots garage, a bit different today. We're not doing cars, we're doing watches. We've got David. David, thanks for your time. Thank you. Mate, uh, tell us about your watches. Yeah, so uh, basically this watch here is our Storm Black Edition. Uh, so Fori Series, the brand. And it's made from parts of a uh, erect Aston Martin repeat air. It's, uh, and it's absolutely stunning and I'm cutting to really nicely filmed shots that I'll do out, out on the way out. If you look at it from an angle, you can see the specs. Yeah, it's, 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 so, it's too bright in here. You've got too much beautiful natural light coming in. <laughs> no. Take me back to prior to watchmaking. What, what gave you the idea for the brand? Uh, look, I've always been a car guy and I've always been into upcycling. Um, so yeah, I guess it was just a natural progression for me from when I was a kid. I've been tinkering with Meccano and then it transcended into cars obviously and, and then, you know, upcycling I did a Vespa project where I chopped a Vespa in half and then turned it into a laptop stand so you're like riding a Vespa but you're actually on a laptop. I can send you an image of that and maybe That's you can right. splice it in. Yeah, I'd love to. Um, but yeah, basically it was just a, a natural progression and, and one day I just had this idea like a light bulb moment uh, and yeah, it just kind of came to me that, you know, there's that close correlation between uh, time and, and, and cars because, you know, if you think about it from a motorsport perspective, everything's about times, whether it be drag cars, whether it be, you know, circuit cars, whatever, it's all about the time, right? Mm. F1, whatever. So, yeah, it was just kind of a, a light bulb moment. I can't really explain it much better than that. Mm. And then I was like, well, how am I actually going to make it? So that was the sort of next step to, to try and take it from an idea to, to reality. Um, so, yeah, obviously trying to, to figure out, like, you know, what to do, how to do it, because the dial is actually about you know 200 times thicker than the normal dial of a of a of a, of a watch because it's paper thin for a normal watch but obviously this is cut from this particular one is cut from an aston martin and it's a, a bonnet so if you think how thick a bonnet is mm. uh then it produces a whole heap of um other other problems and also i'm not a watchmaker so then i was like okay i'm not a watchmaker and uh i got no idea how to make it so i started speaking to watchmakers and a lot of people were like, yeah, it can't be done or, or it can be done, but it's gonna be costly. So sort of set about trying to create prototypes with some help of some friends initially, and then uh, look to produce it overseas, a prototype with some help from factories and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, yeah, went through, just churned through prototype after prototype feedback with each sort of back and forth until mm -hmm. uh, until we get to the, the, the final product which you see here today. So there's 150 of the Aston Martin mm -hmm. and there's 150 of the uh, version made from a Ferrari 348. Mm -hmm. uh, I've only got one of those left out yeah. of the 150. I've still got a few Aston Martins, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, so in total 300 mm -hmm. uh, divvied up into 150 split even. That's mad. Yeah.
is there going to be another iteration yeah, after that? Yeah, so the next series will be a Leaf Green 911. Yeah. Uh, and I think you actually filmed the 911 recently. So I did, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then uh, the other version will be from a Toyota 2000 GT. So really oh, wow. super rare car. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and I was lucky enough to get that from a, a, a car that's been restored by McCarroll's collectors. So mm -hmm. they're doing a full bare metal resto. And ironically, I've got the bonnet from that car, that exact car. Wow. Um, so yeah, it's pretty exciting. What color was the So bonnet? this one was actually stripped down to bare metal because they needed to know what they were in for. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. obviously you can't really find uh, Toyota 2000 GT panels lying around, but this one was pretty far gone mm -hmm. for the level of restoration that they were going for. So mm -hmm. they refabricated one from scratch. Wow. And I happened to get the uh, original JDM uh, tinware. That's um, right. So I'm gonna clear coat it because I think it's it's you can't get any more honest or bare than bare metal. Yeah. So I'm gonna clear coat it and, and leave it. that patina of the swirl marks and everything else that you got from stripping it down and yeah, um, yeah, and, and and a number of years of of, of uh, JDM JDM metal. They're not James last. Bond. Yeah, with, man. A, with a touch of James Bond, of course. They're not gonna last long. <laughs> those watches. No, yeah. that's sick. So let's go. We'll go through it all. Just say, tell me what like, what is going on with these materials here. Okay. Well, look, uh, I probably start with the watch okay. just so that we can sort of uh, get an understanding for the brand and, mm -hmm. and sort of the roots. Mm -hmm. uh, basically, it's Forisari, which in Italian means uh, mechanically bespoke. That's right. Rad, yeah. Know that. yeah. I didn't yeah, know how yeah. to pronounce it either. Yeah. Well, there you yeah, go now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you can always put an Aussie twang on it for a Siri. For a Siri. <laughs> um, so yeah, basically this one here that we've got is made from parts of a Ferrari 348. So the dial is made from a parts of a Ferrari 348 door. Mm -hmm. And then this one that I've got here, which you may not be able to see it on the camera, but you can see a light speckle. Mm -hmm. And this is from a Aston Martin Rapide. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, basically the watches are made out of uh, parts from wrecked supercars and in a nutshell, the materials that you see behind you are essentially uh, materials that are from, you know, uh, iconic cars as well. And um, I partnered up with a guy by the name of Chris Bolas. Um, and he, he runs a trim shop and so he gets a lot of cool custom cars coming through, does retrims and we're going to start making wallets out of uh, the same materials of the, uh, the classic car. So Love it that. takes that concept yeah. and it's sort of, um, you know, expanding on it and then also trying to create an Australian made product because to have a sustainable economy, you gotta you gotta produce stuff 100%. here. Yeah. So, so this material here, what's this off? This is Porsche. Uh, yeah, this is a Porsche. This is a Pasha. And is, is that a Porsche? Is that that's a Porsche a, yep, there? that's yeah, exactly no. right. Chris, yeah. you wanna tell us about this? Jump in. Yeah, these are out of uh, these are out of a Porsche 924. Yep. So obviously, originally down the track, they were retrimmed in just the plain black vinyl, mm -hmm. and obviously, customers outsourced the Pasha fabric, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, it'll really liven up the interior. Yeah, I so love that. Even on door trims and. Yeah. yeah, obviously receipts. Or it's a wallet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, very cool. So, yeah. yeah. That's them. I love that. So that's Porsche. Yeah, What's so picture, I mean, picture this. this it, we, we've just sort of started mm -hmm. like concepts, but it's essentially going to be that sort of size. Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's going to cost about 80 bucks Australian. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that, that's, that's it in a nutshell. Um, and, and this is out of, this is basket weave from an XY GT. Mm. And then this is Monaro trim. So for the Aussie muscle guys. Um, Love that. Yeah. And so there's, yeah, just basically sky's the limit. Uh, sustainability and, 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 Australian and, made. and yeah, Australian made. And so is it different, a different, to sew or it's just the same like it's harder easier it's just going to be there oh, look with obviously with vinyls you do obviously you do get a little bit more stretch and easier to sort of sew mm -hmm. obviously using a fabric depending with whatever weave it's been made out of if you need to cut it um, obviously it'll take different types of binding skills mm -hmm. so um, but predominantly once obviously make some prototypes out of some fabrics um, we'll know exactly on how to finish off all the binding and um, but look pretty much that it all comes down to skill but <laughs> it that. can all be sorted yeah Love that. yeah, yeah. But Chris here now so Chris we're in your amazing little space here yep. I'll try and get like I'll try and capture just 
It's just a beautiful, amazing old of the stories these walls could tell of the years of the of things they've done. <laughs> yeah. So tell us a little bit about what you do here. Yeah, well, um, obviously, massive car enthusiast. Um, obviously, when I finished school, I wanted to get into the car industry. And um, obviously, a lot of guys that I knew were mechanics and panel beating. And I thought I'd get into something a bit, a bit different. And um, had a good friend of mine who did um, auto trimming as uh, work experience. So I um, spoke to him about it. And um, he was like, oh, you know what? Worked on some really nice cars. Obviously, it's clean work. It's something different, like not everybody, like when you tell them I'm a motor trimmer, they're like, do you work on engines? They don't understand that it's upholstery work. Mm. So anyway, um, yeah, I restore all car interiors from repairs, um, old, old cars, new cars, motorbike seats, a mm. bit of commercial furniture. And, um, I can see one yeah, little, yeah, beautiful yeah. old chair here. That's yeah. actually, um, it's a customer of mine. He, he saw that chair in one of the James Bond movies. Yeah, and he right. saw that at an antique store, and as soon as he saw it, he goes, that's the exact same profile as that James Bond movie. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, that's in for a retrim, and, um, yeah, just love the passion of working on these old beauties as well. You're not getting off that easy. I need some, I need some answers to some questions here. Tell me. <laughs> Tell us about your first car. First car, which I still have, is a VL Turbo. Oh, you're kidding. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Never sell that. They're gold mine. <laughs> That'll pay your house off in a couple of years. <laughs> yeah. So, um... I was, I was a big rotary fan. My mm. brother had an RX-3 and I was looking for, uh, what was it, a Series 3 RX-7. Mm. Saw a lot of clapped out ones. Mm. So um, my brother actually had a good friend of his who had an original VL Turbo. Um, it was a second owner. He ended up selling it because he wanted to get married and things like that. So um, it's a good opportunity. Went in for a drive with it, loved it. And yeah, didn't turn back since buying it. So yeah. red on silver, it's got a custom trim, mm. Recaro front seats, VX Monaro rear seats, um, lots of leather. Yeah. Love that. Lots of leather. <laughs> you want to be a nice <laughs> interior, right? <laughs> lots yeah. of leather in yeah. it. Um, yeah. Obviously got the engine rebuilt. Mm. Um, so hopefully by middle of next year, can have it all, all running again. Sick. So, so we're yeah. dosing through the streets of Marifield. Love that, <laughs> exactly, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We'll go right back. We'll start at the very beginning. Tell us about your first car. My first car was a Mazda 1300 STB. Oh, yeah? I paid 300 bucks for it. And with the prices of Mazdas now, I cry every time yeah, I think I know. about I know. that. Yeah. So, um, yeah, they, they weren't as valuable as sort of after them, but I just loved anything with a, anything like pre-1990. I'm 33, so I guess that was something that I just sort of gravitated to anything with a classic bumper. So that was my first car. Uh, and then after that, I had uh, I did sort of flex into the JDM later model stuff. So I had an S15. Mm. Uh, I had an RX3 as well. So then after that, I went back to the classic bumper and rotary nice. as well. Yeah. Uh, I had a Capella. I had three Capellas actually. Mm. Um, so yeah, one twin eyed and one square eyed. So okay. um, yeah, I love the Mazdas. Yeah. Uh, and now I also have a old 67 912 that I'm restoring. So. Nice. Yeah, but that's a labor of love <laughs> and uh, I've had to sell a few organs to, to fund it. <laughs> I bet. Unlimited budget. Yes. Would you would you do anything else to the VL Turbo? Look, um, I'd love to mini tub it, mm -hmm. but obviously being the car that is owning it for so long, I don't really feel comfortable cutting into it. Just want a nice street car at yeah, the end of the day, that. something to enjoy. Yeah. Enough power to, you know, get you excited. Love Turn that. the wheels over a bit, so yeah. All right, so on that same unlimited budget, let's yep. say I've tripled your size here. Yep. Got your VL Turbo. Yes. What other cars would you park in your garage? Okay, unlimited budget? Mm hmm Oh, as a kid growing up, it was Lamborghini Contash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah love um, that. What else? Uh, Porsche 959? Yeah. Yeah, um, what else? Jeez, it's a big budget. Big budget, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Let's have a look. Even an old classic Aston Martin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a DB5 yeah, era. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be really Love nice. That. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Same question. Unlimited budget. Uh, what are you putting in your garage? Look, I'm a big Ferrari nut, so yeah. I'd probably go F40. Yes. That's a good uh, miss out on that. I had one of those on my, uh, on my wall as a kid. Um, so, you know, going to bed, dreaming of that. Mm. Um, Enzo's pretty much last car as well. Mm -hmm. um, Tessa Rossa as well. Had another one of those on my wall. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, and then I'd actually really love a uh, another RX3. Okay. Um, In what style would you go? I'd, I had a 12A sedan, so I've got a soft spot for those. Yeah. Um, so I'd probably, probably do that and shovel a, if I could, 26B in it. Yeah. <laughs> Why Natu- not? Naturally. Why not? Natu- We're unlimited budget. We can do this. <laughs> yeah, unlimited, yeah, unlimited budget. Yeah. Just take yeah. a 787B motor and shove it in there and, yeah. and scream through the streets at 9,000, 10,000 RPM. The streets of Maryville are awake now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I love that. So, yeah, that, that look, and, and I'm a pretty humble man. Uh, you know, the 912 as well, and, and that's it. That's my garage sorted. That's man. Yeah. I love that. All right, so if I gave you any car in the world and i'm gonna i'm gonna go get the panel for you what would be the car you'd want to get a panel for your watches ah it's a it's that's a really tough one because as i said like for me it's i created the brand so that people can have a piece of or you know stay driven to their dreams essentially so grew up you know with supercars on your wall Mm. so i guess Going on that, it'd be either a Countach or an F40. I was going to say, yeah, the F40, um, yeah. F40 would be really cool. Um, yeah. So, yeah, if you if you have... If, you, maybe, maybe if you're offering an F40 panel, Peter, <laughs> probably, uh, happy to take just, it yeah, and turn it into a watch, oh, of course. Imagine that. I don't uh, want to think how much that would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm sure it could be used to, to be restore, to restore one. So, you know, if it's a damaged panel, I, I can I can work yeah. with that. But yeah. I, I don't think I'd have the heart to be able to take a... A, a, a nice good panel, panel that could be used to restore one of these cars and keep yeah. it on the road. But, you know, uh, the guys still race them, so every now and then one's going to take a hit. And, <laughs> exactly, exactly. You, know, you never know. And I'll be there at the track side to, to, to chase him. <laughs> Rip it off. Yeah. If you're looking for a new watch, this is the watch you want. Uh, these guys have made these, you know, it's <laughs> local guys. They're just, the, the story behind them is amazing. I absolutely love it. Um, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Really appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much.